I'm now going to talk about probably the best known name in Scots, um, Robert Burns. Everybody knows Burns, I think. Um, he's, he's probably the, the, the greatest exponent of the Scots language in verse. He's the, the great influence. I think he is, um, I mean, and everybody um, probably knows a lot more Scots than they, than they think. I mean, uh, on Hogbane, uh, everybody, the whole world is um, singing in Scots when they do Old Lang Syne. And on Burns Night, on, on the 25th of January, um, all over the world, and especially in Scotland, um, people are reciting Burns and singing Burns. Um, Burns, of course, is a, is, is a great writer. Um, I think there was this um, idea that you know Burns was a, was a simple plume and laddie that he you know he wasn't uh, educated that he was just a genius. But we know now, of course, that he was he was a very well educated man, and he chose to write in Scots. He didn't always write in Scots, but he chose to write in Scots. He used Scots um, because it was such a, a good it is such a good language to use. Um, it can be really funny. It can be really sharp and satirical. It can be very sad. And I think all Burns' love poetry, I think, um, benefits from the fact that, uh, um, from, the, from the use of Scots. So I'll just do a wee bit from um, O Wert Thou in the Cold Blast. O Wert Thou in the Cold Blast, on yonder lee, on yonder lee, my plady to the angry eart, I'd shelter thee, I'd shelter thee. Or did misfortune's bitter storms around thee blow, around thee blow, Thy beals should be my bosom to share it all, to share it all. Uh, the temptation, of course, when you're reading Burns is to, to sing. I think many of us um, will associate the Scots language with song of various kinds, and the ballad is one of those. Um, so I'm just good to, to read a bit here from the Twa Corbys. Um, a corby is a black crow, and um, it shows that uh, it's about two speaking crows. Um, I think it shows um, how you can use Scots to create uh, an atmosphere of sort of um, sadness and, and um, a melancholy, but um, it's also two crows talking. As I was walking all alone, I heard twa corbies making a main. The tain and to the other say, Where shall we gang and dine today? In behind yon old field dyke, I walk there lies a new slain knight, and nobody kens that he lies there but his hawk, his hound, and lady fair. His hound is to the hunting gain, his hawk to fetch the wild fowl hame, his lady's tain another mate, so we may mak our dinner sweet. Ye'll sit on his white house bane, and I'll pike out his bonny blue een, wi' a lock o' his gowden hair, we'll thick our nest when it grows bare. Mony a one for him makes main, but nane shall ken where he is gain. O'er his white banes, when they are bare, the wind shall blow forever near. I think that's a very good example of, of um, a tradition that, that is probably familiar to us in, in, in many ways and how, just how good Scots can be for sort of conjuring up an atmosphere.